Hi, it's Tanya from Poppy Monroe. Welcome back, and if you're new, thank you so much for joining your video, and I'd love to hear in the comments how you heard about us. So today we're gonna to look at the Dana Hip Pack from Lynn's Handmade. It's such a cute hip pack, and this request came from my, one of my local sewing groups, So Let's Talk by Mimi Fabrics and Poppy Monroe. I'll pop the link in the comments below as well. We're gonna look at the tools that we need uh, in order to complete this project. So, depending on the fabric that you might be using, I'm going to be using a faux leather on the outside. Um, for some machines, this machine, it, it goes through pretty well. Um, on my other machine, however, though, I would require a Teflon foot to make sure that um, it glides through nice and easy. If you find it sticking or the stitches aren't even, look into maybe a Teflon foot or using tissue paper or um, Kleenex or paper um, be to put between your fabric and your machine. You're gonna need the right needle as well, depending again on the fabric that you're using. I'm using a faux leather, so I'm, I should be using a Microtex or a leather needle in size 90. I have neither of those ha in the house. Unfortunately, I must have broken my last one. And so I'm gonna be using a universal needle, but on size 90, that's pretty important. You'll also be needing clips. Because I'm using faux leather, I can't use pins, so I'm gonna be using these little clips to keep the fabric safe. You might need to keep this handy. I don't know, fingers crossed that we don't. And uh, you'll need some snips. In terms of the hardware, you're gonna need um, potentially some new stuff to you. I think this is what why this request came up in the group um, because there's some new to us pieces that we'll be using. All the hardware, uh, everything was purchased at Mimi Fabrics that I'll be using. The hardware is from Emmeline Bags. Um, so here are the Chicago screws. One fits inside the other and screws together. Um, and you'll notice that on um, this piece, there's a spot for um, a screwdriver. So uh, you can either do uh, the star or the flathead um, screwdriver. A butter knife also works just fine. So whatever you have kicking around, that's what you're gonna use for these. You're also going to need these adjustable sliders. You're going to need one. This is the one inch from Emmeline Bags. You'll need the D-rings in size one inch, two of those, and you'll need the swivel snap hook, one of them um, in uh, the one inch size as well. I'm using the color, the copper color uh, or the rose gold. <clears throat> now, to cut out your pieces, you'll need a front top panel piece in your exterior. You'll need a main front panel piece. And you'll need the back piece. Now the back piece was a, a little bit extra in that it came in two pieces. So what you do is you just line it up with the arrows matching. You don't overlap. You just line it up, tape it down the middle, and then you'll come out with this nice big back piece like this. You'll also need the side panel piece cut in mirror images. So that means you have a left and a right for the lining. You'll need to consider, if you use a thicker fabric like a canvas, um, uh, you could even put soft shell on the inside for your liner. Um, those fabrics you probably won't need to interface. I'm using a Rebecca Ruck um, jersey for the inside because I absolutely love this rose marble print. And so what I'm gonna do is line it with uh, Pellin 101 interfacing. It looks like this, okay? And my tip for um, not getting gunk on your iron because it isn't, it, it's a fusible one, so there's an adhesive on the back, is what I do is I take my, um, I take a big chunk of my jersey fabric, I take my, um, my 101, and I lay it on top here, and the 101 is cut out as per the pattern piece. I lay it on top, <clears throat> and then I fuse it to my big chunk. Instead of cutting out the, um, the jersey to match the interfacing, um, because sometimes it just doesn't quite line up. So I will then press it, um, and you don't iron it like this, you press it and you hold for 10 seconds, you press, you hold for 10 seconds, you press, you hold for 10 seconds, and that makes sure that you get a nice bond uh, with, your, with your adhesive onto your jersey. And then, um, I've done this before the video, so you'll see it's now attached to the jersey. So now I can go back in with my snips and I can cut around 
nice and carefully. So then now you have um, a front liner piece. Now I've just gone ahead and done that with the top um, panel liner as well. Um, so it is interfaced on the back. So oh, you're also going to need a zipper. This is um, a zipper by the yard, also by Emmeline Bags, and it matches the hardware, which is pretty cute. Um, and so you're gonna need nine inches of one of these, or you can use a closed end zipper, and Lynn's Handmade is recommend using an eight inch zipper so that you don't have to sew over top of the teeth. You'll also need, if you're using a zipper by the yard, you'll need a zipper pull um, to, to install. This one also matches, it's gonna be cute. And when you install your zipper, you may consider using a zipper foot on your sewing machine. So let's get started. You're gonna take your zipper, and I'm gonna measure it at nine inches, and I'm gonna give it a little snip. Not with your fabric scissors, FYI, use your craft scissors. Um, for this task. I've cut my, my zipper by the yard down to nine inches and I need to install my zipper pull to start. What I will do is I will take the zipper and this piece here that holds the little pull, I will slip that in between the tines, so. Okay, and I'll just guide it onto my zipper and it's okay if it doesn't line up perfectly on the right and left side of the zipper. Like it's okay if there's a little um, um, discrepancy from the side to side. Because what I do is I pull it all the way to the other side and then it just, it's okay because we're gonna sew that into the bag anyhow. So now that you have your zipper pull installed, we're gonna get sewing. Take your main front piece, place it face up so the good side is facing you in, on your workstation. Take your zipper, put it facing down so that the good side of the zipper and the good side of your main front piece are facing. And then take your lining, front lining piece that is now interfaced if required, and you're gonna put it as a sandwich, so it's like a zipper sandwich, and you're gonna take your clips. Remember, if you're using faux, faux leather, you wanna make sure that um, you're using clips. And you want the raw edges to be flush. Now you can go ahead and sew that on. If this is your first time installing a zipper, I'm gonna show you another way to do it. Um, it's gonna give you the same exact result with an extra step. So instead of doing the sandwich, remove your lining piece, install the zipper to your main front. Now, I have a clear line of sight on this zipper. If you were to make a sandwich, you can't see where the zipper is. And so your line against your zipper may be wobbly unless you're really comfortable, okay? So it takes an extra 30 seconds to do. I would recommend doing it. Um, I've gone ahead and put my zipper foot on. Um, it just gives a, a nice clean line when you're installing a zipper. It does feel a little bit awkward to start, but if you're really patient and go slow, um, you'll, uh, you, you may be pleased and enjoy it as well. So I'm gonna drop my needle in, um, and I'm just using the edge of my zipper foot as a guide next to the actual zipper. And I'm gonna maintain that same distance between the, the zipper foot and the zipper as I'm sewing. Like it's, I'm, I'm aiming for like right next to it, okay? So I'm gonna start it off and backstitch. One thing I didn't mention, if, if you are new, you want your, your uh, thread tension to be at about a four, um, and your stitch length, I've done two and a half. Or if you have a dial, it'd be like a two, two and a half to three, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew down, making sure that the raw edges are flush with each other. Um, as I get to the zipper head, I'm gonna pause with the needle down and lift my foot. I'm gonna wiggle the, the uh, zipper um, pull past the needle and this is kind of like a whoopsie moment. I pulled it too far, but it's okay. 
I'm just gonna reattach it with my fork. Quit playing games with my heart. We went to Backstreet Boys this week. It's really, really fun. So make sure, you can always put a pin or you could stitch it closed to make sure that you don't do just as I just did. Okay, so back to it. We're past the zipper head. And I'm gonna, because I'm starting again, I'm gonna back stitch a little bit. And here we go, all the way to the end. to the end back stitch again and now congratulations if this is your first time installing half of a zipper pat yourself on the back that's awesome good job so now we have to do this part in two steps right because we didn't attach the the lining part yet so you just do the same thing that we just did the first time and you're gonna line it up um, you're gonna make sure that uh, the edge of your lining is flush with the edge of your main and now that I've clipped it, I'll show you, it's a zipper sandwich. If I lift up this lining, the zipper is in between the two fabric pieces, okay? And now we sew again. I would follow along the, the line, the sewing line that you created when you installed the zipper to the main fabric, okay? Check her that out, isn't it beautiful? So next step is an optional top stitch. You're gonna do it at an eighth of an inch from the edge. And for this, I'm gonna, oops, from this, I'm gonna switch to my zigzag foot. Okay, and so now I'm gonna increase my stitch length to maybe a four. And uh, what I just did there is I, I decreased my uh, thread tension down to about a two and a half. And as I'm sewing, I'm making sure it's nice and taut. If you were using a canvas, I would press it before I did this step. But since I'm using full leather, I can't do that. Okay, I'm coming near the zipper pull again. With the needle position down, I lift that foot and I pull the zipper pull past. And I'm coming towards the end here. So now you're just gonna repeat the same process, but you're gonna do it with the top um, panel pieces. Okay, so you can do however you just did that, I would repeat it. So you can either do the sandwich method, um, or you can do the front and then, and then the lining. Switching back out to my zipper foot and going back down to that two and a half, um, 2.5 stitch length. Back stitch. Very good, and now repeat, right, for that last piece. And again, when you go to put on your lining, if you're doing it in two steps, line up the edge with the edge of the main. Okay. I'm gonna move my zipper pull out of the way and attach this piece next. All right, so now we just need to top stitch and then uh, we'll move on. Um, you'll notice that as you press this up, I'm getting it nice and flat here, as you press it up, your lining is a quarter, uh, one quarter inch shorter than your main. And that's, that's perfect. Is, if it isn't, give it a little trim. 
So increase to four, decrease to two and a half, and just do a quick top stitch here, nice and even. As you look at that, it's just so pretty, so pretty. We're gonna go ahead and sew in the darts. These little notches here are gonna create a dart. So you fold um, the main right sides together, right sides together. And you'll do the same with the lining. Right sides together. And this is gonna give it an, a cute little shape on the bottom. And extra volume inside too, right? It just gives it a little bit more 3D. All right, and now you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just adjusting my needle position. And here we go. Make sure you back stitch. Okay. Yeah, and just repeat it for all four. Good. Now that you've sewn all of your darts, uh, Linz is suggesting that you trim down to one eighth of an inch. This is the last one. Good. So now they're down to one eighth of an inch. You want to push. Um, the raw edges together, okay, to create a bit of a shape here. So you just push them in, push them in there. So there's the front piece, and it already has just that beautiful shape. Okay, so now we're gonna create the pocket within your bag. So take your back lining, I apologize in the earlier, portion of the video, I didn't include this. It was just an oversight as I was going through. So you're gonna put it down, uh, also um, interfaced if required, and right side facing up. Take your front piece and put it right side facing up as well. Now, pull the front main piece towards you okay, and line up the top edges so that the raw edges are um, flush. We're actually just gonna sew like around this piece, but you want it to be flush with the lining and not the main because remember the lining is um, a quarter inch shorter. Okay, so now you wanna line up um, the edges all the way around. It's a little bit tricky because it's three dimensional now, right? You're gonna go and line up against all three layers. I would recommend trying to close the zipper as far as possible without undoing the zipper. And then try your best to ease it in. And then go back and just ease it a little bit more if it didn't line up perfectly. Impossible as it may seem, even if I try. They're just like so good for so many aspects of your life, eh? Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for putting up with me. All right, so now um, you've clipped it to the lining, but actually we're gonna sew all the way around through the three layers. So now I want you to move these top clips over to the side so that the top of the, the the bag lining, the back bag lining, is flush with the top of the front bag lining, but the sides, all three of them, are also flush, okay? Na, 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 na. Okay, so now I want you to sew around, going down the side, across the bottom, and up the top using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. I like sewing so that my leather is facing up, now, as I go over the zipper, I'm gonna hand crank. It probably would be okay 
um, because it's just a, like a plastic zipper, but best practice just in case. I mean, needles aren't super cheap. Your machine isn't cheap. Um, I just like to be on the careful side. So as you're going around the corners, you kind of just smoosh it all down. It's gonna bubble and feel a little bit strange. Um, but just go one stitch at a time. Each stitch is a straight stitch, right? It doesn't, um, I know that uh, it, sewing curves for the first time can be a challenge and intimidating, but if you just think about each stitch is one straight stitch, and it's just a whole bunch of straight stitches put together, um, take it one stitch at a time. On the home stretch here. Now, as you come to the zipper, it's going to be open a little bit, right? Because you can't have the zipper pull right there. So you're going to try and keep it as close together as possible because you're basting it in place right now. Again, hand crank over. Good job, your basting stitch is in place and congratulations, you now have a pocket it's so cute it's so cute oh my gosh look I love this little zipper pull too it's just the sweetest okay so now we're gonna attach the side front panels um, there is a little bit of some attention to be had here so uh, this is slightly taller than your front panel so you need to align this so that the side is about a quarter of an inch up higher than your front panel. Pin that in place. And then uh, you're aligning straight edge to straight edge and you'll notice that it starts to curve on the front panel, the front center panel, and you don't want to sew beyond that straight edge. You don't want to curve down. That's not the look that you want. Um, so if you do have extras, like on my one side, I must have sewn the seam allowance maybe just a little bit more generously. And so I do have a little bit of extra, but just as Linz has indicated in her pattern, I'm just gonna trim that at the end. So we'll go ahead and sew and attach it at 3 eighths of an inch. Make sure you backstitch. Now, as you get to the zipper, consider hand cranking. That's my recommendation. That's what I, I don't know, just like to be a little bit kind to my machines. And I'm just marking where that straight part, that front center ends. And as I get to it, I just run off the side. Okay. And, um... <clears throat> Then I'm going to trim it because look like it overhangs a little bit. So I'm just going to trim it. And now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and do some back stitching because I didn't do that on the first one. So just following that seam that I just made and I'm going to back stitch a little bit. Just to strengthen it. I just love how quickly this takes shape. It's just so, so beautiful. I absolutely love this. So now you need to do a little bit of trimming, okay? So just as we talked about before, if you have a little bit extra on the sides, you can go ahead and trim that off from the front side pieces. It's also a good time to go ahead and trim your, um, your zipper. So I'm not using my fabric scissors. I'm gonna put those far away there. I'm gonna use my craft scissors. These are just my kids craft center scissors and they do a great job. I'll trim up this other side. Nice and tidy. If there's any other like whoopsies along the way, just trim it down so that it looks nice and tidy. It's gonna be sewn into the middle anyhow. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch. <clears throat> if you're using canvas or a material, I would press it first. I can't with my, my faux leather, so I'm just gonna flatten it nicely and top stitch at an eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna use a four for my stitch length. I'm at the zipper. So there still is a little bit of coil in there, right? Even though we've trimmed. So at your preference, I like to hand crank as I said. 
Um, look at how beautiful that is. Like honestly, just take a moment and look, like enjoy the whole process. I just love this little bag. Okay, so now that you have your front complete, you'll notice on the top, you have these little ears. Um, that's okay, that's intentional. Uh, it was built into the design of the pattern. And what you should do is take a ruler and your rotary or a ruler and draw on a line and cut it with scissors so that it's completely flush across the top. This is actually a really important step. So I'm gonna go ahead and off camera, go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. So now we need to attach our D-ring before we can put it all together. So I have our two D-rings here. I've cut the webbing, uh, it's a one inch webbing by three inches and I'm just gonna slip the D-ring in here and do a quick little stitch to just stitch it in place here. It's just easier to hold it in place. Now I'm gonna switch over to the zipper foot. Um, we're gonna baste this in place um, to our pack, okay? So centering, um, along the side angled piece here. I'm gonna overhang the webbing by one inch and then sew nice, tight and close to the D-ring. Very good, okay? And I'll do the same with the other side. Back stitch. Back stitch back all right. Can you imagine living with me? Oh my god. So now we're gonna attach the back part to our front part and um, then we're gonna attach the strap and then we're good to go. We're almost there. Uh, so an important piece, you're gonna wanna open your zipper that's gonna help with when we turn it inside out. And just a couple of things to note here, you want um, a quarter inch gap uh, at the top because that's gonna allow you to turn it right side out. With your front facing up, you're gonna put your back um, on top and um, just clip all the way around. If it doesn't line up 100%, it's okay, don't worry. It's just because maybe you were off just slightly with your seam allowance and that's okay. We're okay with that, just trim it. Every bag doesn't have to be the exact same dimensions as the next one. And as long as you're like, it's gonna come out with a pretty shape. And as long as it holds things and it looks great, it makes you happy. This is like a really great starter. Um, starter pattern for bag making because it can help you get used to seam allowance. Okay, so we're gonna go and sew all the way around, including across the top, but you're gonna leave, you're only gonna sew the front uh, main and, and back mains together across the front. Across the bottom, however, you will sew the entire, like all three layers together, okay? I'm leaving my zipper foot on for this because again, I wanna get nice and tight to that D-ring. And as I go around, I'm gonna use my zigzag just cause I find it holds it a little bit better and I'll switch back when I get to, um, to the D-ring. Now again, I'm getting to that, um, that uh, dart and so I just flatten it down and with each stitch, I just keep thinking I want it to feel flat before it stitches. Awesome. Now you've sewn all the way around, it's time to go and, and clip. So you're gonna trim your seam allowance across um, across the top and across the round and you may consider notching around now make sure if you notch in here that um 
you don't trim through your seam allowance. So inside the pocket, you've already opened your zipper, right? You did that before we sewed it together. And so you're gonna reach in and birth your Dana pack. I'll be in here. Put your hand in there. Push it out all the way around. You can get a tool in here too to get it nice and perfect. Oh my gosh, it's just so beautiful. And you can put so much in here too. I mean, you can put your wallet and your phone and your little snacks and whatever else you might need. This would also be great if you uh, had to carry an EpiPen for someone, uh, it would fit in here nicely as well. Just need to do our, decor our, our top stitching, our decorative stitching, uh, apply our Chicago screws and then I apply our strap. Um, so what you are gonna do is do your top stitching from this corner here, the bottom of your side panel piece, up, across, across the top, and then um, down to the other side here. When you go across the top, if you look on the inside, you're going to make sure that this is nice and flat on the inside and you want to close that hole, okay? So you're going to enclose the seam allowance here in your top stitch, okay? So let's get started. Take your time. This is um, really what sets this and gives it just a, a beautiful finish. Um, but you want to make sure you take your time and get it accurate, okay? So my stitch length is at a four. I'm gonna decrease my thread tension to about a two. And I'm gonna use uh, that 1 8 seam allowance. And I'm gonna drop my needle. I'm gonna drop my needle right on that stitch line that I made along the side here, okay? So that it's nice and seamless. Pos like if it's possible to iron it, iron it. It's gonna make it look just so nice. Now, this top stitch across um, the, sti the webbing here, your strap, um, apparently is all you need and is reinforcing enough. As you approach your stitch line again, I'm gonna lift my foot and double check, did I make it? Because I can't quite see with this foot and I didn't, so I'm gonna there you go, now I'm on top of it and I'm gonna backstitch too. All right, wow, this is just absolutely stunning. Came together beautifully. Hey, so now we just need to install our Chicago screws. Um, and these are more decorative than anything because uh, the top stitching and the construction apparently is sufficient. Um, for the weight of this particular pack um, because it, it, it is a smaller pack. So uh, what you need to do is create a hole. Decide, decide where you want your Chicago screws. You could put four here. You could do any sort of shape. I'm just gonna do one and one. Um, and what you need to do is, uh, if you have a rivet press, you could go ahead and create your hole here. Um, uh, you could use a tool like an awl, or um, I have this little press, and so what I've done is gone ahead and made a hole, and now I'm taking the flat side, I like the flat side out, and I'm just gonna put that through to the back. And I'm just pushing around the screw pushing the fabric down so it's out of the way. And then you're taking the screw part and I'll start it with my fingers and I'll finish it off with um, a screwdriver, a proper screwdriver. Now, if you really wanted to set it, you could drop in a little bit of fabric glue into the, um, the hollow part of the screw first before installing the screw in, and that would keep it in there forever. We're gonna make the strap now. I have my strap, I've cut it at 40 inches, and that should give us a hip pack uh, large enough for about a 50 inch waist. So 
um, up to a 50 inch waist. If you're, it, it says in the pattern, if you're a zero zero to a size two, you may need to decrease uh, the size of your strap. What you're, you'll do is you'll take your adjustable slider and feed it in through your strap. I'm using webbing. Use the pattern to uh, learn how to make a strap from fabric if that's what you're choosing to do. Um, so great, so you have your slider on. Now you need to install um, your swivel hook. I'm doing a method uh, where I'm only having uh, one swivel hook and the other side of the strap will stay fixed to the bag and I'll show you what, what I mean by that. So pull the slider about halfway down and then you're gonna loop the webbing back across itself and, and through the, the adjustable slider, okay? Now, I'm gonna pull this all the way to the end, okay? And on the other side, I'm gonna loop it back to the underside and fold it in one time so that these, um, the webbing is, um, the raw edge is tucked in and I'm going to sew this to itself okay so I'm gonna make a closed loop on this end and I'm gonna secure that with um, some stitching you can you can do solid line passes you can do what I'm gonna do is a box with an X in the middle I mean there is no sign so I'll try to show you, I used a blue thread so that hopefully you'll be able to see that. Okay, I've just made a box with like an X through the middle. You'll see that, check out some of your backpacks to see how they've, they've closed off some webbing. Okay, so now you have a loop on one side, loop on one side with your hook, with your clasp, and that's gonna clasp onto one side of your Dana pack, sorry. And the other side is going to be fixed. Kind of saves on hardware a little bit. And truly, I mean, you're probably not going to um, unhook both sides. But that is an option that you could do. So in this case, you're going to thread. This is considered the right side. Thread it down through the hook. And then you're going to curve around to the back and fold in once and then attach it to the back of the webbing. And then you're gonna sew a square. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited for you. And I can't wait to see, if you use this tutorial, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel um, and if you would like this video, it's encouraging for me. I'm just a home sewist and I just like to share what, um, what I've been up to. And so I would appreciate your support as well. Um, you can also come in to the Facebook group that I have linked in the bottom and share the make uh, that you've created. We would love to see it. It's a really great community. So here is your Dana hip pack. It is absolutely such a pleasure to make. It is super fun. I can see myself making more of these um, for Christmas presents, for myself. Um, it's such a great use of scraps. I'm gonna size down as the pattern is indicated and make some for my kids as well. Um, I see these for birthday parties coming up. They're just so cute and the use of the Chicago screws is just super fun. Um, in the pattern they have indicated that you can put them as decorative pieces through your strap. I've used webbing and I'm not super confident that that wouldn't fray and so I've just used the stitching on mine. But If you used a fabric strap uh, or cork perhaps it would be super fun to see these Chicago screws um, used in this as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for following along and please drop a comment below. Let me know where you're from and how you've heard about it.